using the HDMI cable. Good morning. Uh, wish you all a uh, integrally holistic and holistically integrating International Yoga Day today. Uh, so it's the ninth edition. Uh, it's being celebrated uh, almost 175 countries. Uh, so I think I sent out uh, a message about the celebrations in IASC. I don't know if uh, any of you had a chance to go. No. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been difficult, yes. <laughs> uh, but there are certain things you can do without the yoga mat as well, so that's the reason I sent that message. That's okay. Uh, so, at the end of the uh, previous class, uh, we introduced the concept of the angular velocity, uh, which is essential for your homeworks, and uh, we will continue to talk about that. Um, we will also see there are certain other advantages of the angular velocity over and above what it actually means uh, like it is an obvious extension of uh, angles and velocities to combine these two concepts. But angles um, are very uh, difficult animals to deal with I think I mentioned this uh, if you take a simple example of an aircraft let us say the aircraft uh, starts at a certain orientation let us say these are two different aircraft which are at uh, same orientation and uh, let us say we give them uh, uh, the same angles of pitch yaw and roll but uh, we will do that in different um, order. Okay. So, in other words, I, in this case, I will give, a, a, let us say, a roll first and then a yaw and then a pitch. In this case, I give, let us say, the pitch first, then a roll and then a yaw. So, these can enter, end up with entirely different orientations at the end of the day. So, in other words, the order also matters. This is very much unlike translation or any other vector where you know that if there is a displacement let us say in i direction, j direction and k direction, I can instead give it first in k, uh, k then I, uh, j and then I, I would end up with exactly the same thing. So, but on the other hand angular velocity is a vector like any other vector and it behaves, um, uh, it follows all the rules that typical angular uh, any vector follows. So, this is the reason why this is so important that we are trying to understand angles from a perspective of changing angles that is for, from a perspective of uh, the angular velocity and uh, this also helps us in dealing with a lot of uh, more complex derivations uh, much more simply because as I said um, in passing towards the end of the last class uh, the time rate of change of any vector uh, can be in, in a sense related to a cross product with the angular velocity and which is what uh, we will start uh, uh, taking a look at today. Um, right from the very first uh, class I have been kind of stressing this particular fact that um, unlike uh, when you take a derivative of a scalar, when you take the derivative of any vector, uh, let us say uh, a vector v need not be the velocity, but some vector v when you are taking the derivative with respect to any scalar, uh, let us say t need not necessarily be time, but essentially you are taking the de derivative of a vector with respect to a scalar, then the uh, frame of reference matters and which is why we need to uh, put it as a uh, pre superscript. superscript. So, in other words, this is not equal to, let us say, in some other uh, frame of reference, if you have the same vector taken, uh, the derivative taken with respect to the same scalar quantity. So, in general, we say that this is not true. So, uh, today we will have a 
way of seeing uh, based on the relationship between I and A. How are these two different? What exactly is the difference between them? Um, under what circumstances will they be different? Which is what uh, we will try to um, look at. Um, I and A could be any uh, arbitrary uh, frames of reference and we as I said interchangeably use this word frame of reference with uh, a rigid body and uh, these two are equivalent so sometimes we could call it a, a frame of reference sometimes we could call it a rigid body which we will uh, use this term quite a bit so I'll be um, using the uh, abbreviation RB uh, I got a little confused towards the end of last class what RBD I had uh, written as but RBD stands for rigid body dynamics so you know, which is what will be half of this entire course uh, both 2D and 3D motions of uh, rigid bodies which will be uh, clubbed together under rigid body dynamics which of course just like particle uh, dynamics involves both the kin kinetics and uh, kinematics we will first look at the kinematics and then uh, get into the uh, kinetics now um, though as I said I and A are any generic uh, frames of reference uh, for a lot of contexts uh, uh, we can kind of uh, just to uh, set our imagination right we can think of I as let's say the earth um, let's say an earth fixed inertial frame of reference uh, and the I essentially goes from there over there but you know that the earth is actually uh, accelerating rotating in particular and therefore uh, revolving and processing as well and therefore it's truly not inertial but from uh, most um, engineering points of view in terms of the accuracies that we require uh, it really doesn't matter and it's reasonably good enough to consider that on the other hand uh, we will uh, uh, think of a as the aircraft um, it could be any kind of aircraft um, uh, sometimes we're looking at fixed wing sometimes we'll be looking at um, let's say um, uh, helicopter rotor, rotor aircraft rotorcraft uh, but um, we will see that uh, these uh, terminologies that we are using will kind of uh, can be used in a chain form so we will start by relating um, certain changes with respect to a frame i uh, and changes with respect to a uh, frame A then we can introduce another frame B for example and relate A to B and eventually therefore a, be able to relate uh, I to B uh, so this is this could be uh, very clearly explained in the case of the rotorcraft for example where you have the earth fixed frame just like in a fixed wing aircraft you have the aircraft fixed frame then also you have a frame that you can fix to the uh, rotating rotor the main rotor let's say and so essentially there is a difference between a frame which is fixed to the helicopter fuselage and the one which is fixed to the hub which is rotating so typically the uh, these two are connected by a mechanism called the swash plate and the dynamics between them is very very interesting indeed and um, uh, we will see how a rotor blade analysis is much more complex compared to a fixed wing uh, analysis because of the additional motion that is involved with the rotation but with these kinds of concepts that we are going to introduce especially in today's class we will see that this is something that can be handled very very easily okay so uh, as i said we can generalize so uh, we will typically um, relate quantities which are uh, connected to each other through a, what we uh, called as a simple rotation in the previous class where uh, we are essentially saying that the if there is a rotation between two frames of reference or two um, rigid bodies or one frame of reference another rigid rigid body doesn't matter essentially you can always identify instantaneously a particular axis of rotation of one with respect to the other which is negative of the other with respect to the first so uh, at that uh, instant that particular line will not have any motion so essentially unless of course they are translating as well so if there is a purely rotational motion between these two then we are saying that there is always a possibility of finding a particular uh, line 
which is kind of common to these two rigid bodies and therefore um, as the rotation takes place instantaneous uh, in an infinitesimal amount of time uh, you would see that, that there is no change as far as that axis is concerned so that which is why we can take that as the direction of this angular velocity vector and um, of course there is now um, a possibility of the vector being this way or this way that is the only uh, difference because once you identify an axis it is a line and the vector is along the line so we need to say whether it is uh, in this direction or this direction two uh, possibilities are there and that we take it as depending upon the angle uh, of rotation uh, instantaneously um, uh, for a small change in delta t which direction is the angle changing so uh, you we, then we use the right hand thumb rule to say that that is the direction of the angular velocity so this is uh, something that um, is very basic concept as far as all of dynamics is concerned especially when we are moving from particles to bodies uh, this is the new concept that we are introducing we will never talk of uh, rotation of a particle because it does not make sense it is a point and therefore only its translation matters similarly uh, we cannot talk of um, the the translation of a rigid body without further qualification it is mostly rotations that we are talking about and the translation of a point on the rigid body typically the center of mass or whatever we can be talking of its translation but essentially we cannot talk of the translation of the translation of a rigid body because each point in the rigid body can be moving by different amounts so we need to uh, qualify it by saying which particular point in the rigid body we are referring to when we are talking about the translation more often than not um, the default would of course be the center of mass and therefore uh, when we say uh, when somebody says just tra translation of rigid body uh, they are uh, most probably referring to the translation of the of its center of mass. So now uh, the first goal uh, that we will start with in today's class is to see what is the distinction between these two uh, we see that the numerator and denominator are the same only differences in terms of with respect to which frame we are taking the, de uh, the derivative uh, we already know it is different but how much different is it will essentially be in terms of the angular velocity between these two frames of reference or the um, rigid bodies that we have introduced. So, in, in this particular example case, it is the rotation of the aircraft with respect to the earth that we are talking about and its change with respect to time which means the angular velocity of the aircraft in I. So, which um, is uh, a good notation for this is A in I but um, going with your book uh, this can also be written as the angular velocity and underlined of course because it is a vector of A with respect to I. So, both these notations will be kind of interchangeably used. Um, so, this is the preferred notation but uh, in many of my slides I will have uh, this particular notation or I could even put A, a slash I as a superscript uh, so that I can have uh, space for putting the uh, components of this particular vector as omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. But essentially we are talking about this or um, if it is uh, written for example in the position vectors case, uh, position vector from some point uh, let us say P uh, to another point Q can be written either this way or the same thing can be written as the position vector of Q with respect to uh, P. So, so these are kind of uh, very common uh, notations that are used in a lot of uh, different um, uh, textbooks and literature. So, just be familiar with this uh, particular difference. So, same thing in this case also we I can uh, put it as from Q uh, to P. So, this is another uh, so three alternatives over here. So, similarly you could have alternatives over here uh, as well. Uh, so, whenever a slash is used it is saying it is of that quantity with respect to some other quantity, but when it is used um, uh, adjacent to each other then it is saying going from here to there. So, that is the difference that you will have to uh, keep in mind. So, in this case if I put it together I would uh, say I A rather than A slash I. Okay, so, so this is uh, something what we are going to state right now is valid for any vector. So, as I said even here uh, we uh, though we use typically for velocity and therefore this would become acceleration is uh, referring to any arbitrary vector. So, let us uh, call that arbitrary vector as q it could be a position vector, it could be a velocity, it could be acceleration, jerk whatever, but essentially uh, it is a vector and um, 
we will also consider two uh, arbitrary frames of reference or rigid bodies I and A. Uh, as I said, this is an example where I is earth and A is aircraft, but it again uh, there is uh, without loss of generality whatever we are going to show, show here is valid for any frames of reference or any rigid bodies. Right? So, this is an important relation which we will use um, very frequently throughout the course almost till the last date um, which essentially is as I said relating these two quantities that is the derivative of the same quantity with respect to this uh, another scalar quantity uh, both on the left and the right hand side the only difference being that the frame of reference is different. So, that is what is the first term on the uh, right hand side and the um, whatever is on the left hand side. So, the difference as you see is essentially this particular cross product. So, the cross product is saying that it is the angular velocity of the aircraft with respect to the earth or the frame A with respect to frame I crossed with that particular vector. So, uh, if you see there are uh, cases where um, this is uh, we are saying it is in general not equal. So, there are which also means that there are there can be special or particular cases where these two are equal to each other. So, in other words uh, irrespective of whether uh, I take it in I or A it is going to be the same. So, uh, can you think of uh, examples where these two could be equal to each other? And what conditions can these two be equal to each other? Same frames of reference, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, that is one possibility, yes. Uh, if, um, if the, they, could they be different frames of reference, but they, they, the, what they refer to is like kind of equivalent? Yes, yeah, yeah, true, 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 yeah. So, 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 so essentially what you are saying is that these, um, like he said, uh, it is the same frame of reference that is the simplest case that you can have. The other case is where uh, these two are frames of reference, but um, the frame is such that uh, the coordinate system that you introduce is kind of uh, oriented differently to each other. right? So, or it could be translated to each other, but when you are talking purely in terms of frame of reference, the only possibility is that or what he said that the frame of it is the same ident uh, in other words I and A are identical to each other. So, that is the only case, but only when you introduce along with a coordinate system, then you can put the origin at different places for these two frames of reference and you can also um, uh, that is one difference already uh, or you can uh, keep the origin the same and orient the coordinate system in a different way. Okay? So, in either case the important point is that there should be no rotation between them. So, essentially you are, you are saying that these uh, in other words they, uh, the rotation does not change with respect to time which essentially see you can see um, from a mathematical point of view also that if these two have to be equal obviously the second term has to go to 0. right? So, you can then think of ways in which you can get the second term equal to 0. So, one that you are talking about that the frames are the same is saying that A and I are the same. So, angular velocity of A with respect to A or I with respect to I is 0. right? So, in other words I does not rotate with respect to I uh, neither does A with respect to A. So, therefore, you are essentially saying that is equal to 0. So, what is what are the other ways from you from pure mathematical perspective you can see if you want to let the second term go to 0 what is another way? One way is to put this to 0 which means that there is no um, th uh, they could be different frames, but they are not having an angular velocity with respect to each other. In other words, their orientations with respect to each other could be different, but it is fixed over a period of time they are not the orientation relative to each other is not changing right so uh, both together could be changing so both could be changing with respect to another frame of reference b okay but they are changing by the same in the same way so that they each have an angular velocity with another frame b let's say a sun fixed reference frame but uh, essentially they are saying for example a geostationary satellite geostationary satellite with respect to the earth it they are maintaining their orientations with re, and po even position in fact with respect to each other but um, each of them is having a actually a, a rotation and an angular velocity with respect to the sun or with respect to a zodiac fixed uh, reference frame so 
one way is of course this going to zero the other obvious way is if this is zero so in other words that's a trivial case where the vector uh, is a zero vector so a null vector obviously um, is a constant first of all and doesn't change with anything and um, whether you take the derivative with respect to a frame uh, i or a again obviously it's not going to change can you think of any other way in which these two could be equal very good yeah so because what is uh, involved here is a cross product and therefore if these two are parallel to each other then obviously you are not going to have. So what does that mean if it is parallel we already said what is the direction of the angular velocity right. So it is the axis of rotation okay with anti clockwise being the positive so that is how we uh, typically direct it. So essentially we are saying that this vector is aligned with the axis of rotation. So um, it may not be at the axis of rotation it could be a distance away but it is essentially parallel as uh, pointed out yeah. So No, uh, angular velocity of A with respect to I, yeah, yeah. So the, the slash is a little confusing, but is typically the way uh, I would prefer to write it is to put I on the left hand side, say then you say um, uh, this is the frame uh, always with respect to which we take a derivative or with respect to which we are considering an angular velocity and the right is always of that particular quantity that we are interested in okay but when it's a slash which is i think um, the notation used in your book as well so it's essentially a slash i uh, it's angular velocity of a um, with respect to i uh, what would be angular velocity of i with respect to a compared to this exactly so so i slash a would just change the sign to negative so that's important to remember so so there are three conditions under which um, this generally uh, unequal relationship can become an equality as a special case one is when uh, there's no change in rotation with respect to time between the two frames um, which of course more trivially would be the same frame etc but then uh, the other one is of course again a very trivial case where q is um, equal to 0 but the um, important non-trivial case to be aware of is uh, what was pointed out by Atharva which is essentially that these two vectors are parallel to each other in which case uh, the cross product would go to 0. Right. So, uh, as I said, uh, keep uh, this in mind because this is something we are going to use uh, frequently because this is something valid for any arbitrary vector q and any arbitrary pairs of frames of reference that is um, i and a. Okay. So, now angular velocity um, is therefore because um, many a times it is kind of difficult to integrate a particular vector with a uh, certain reference frame but we might re require that quantity but it might be much easier to take the derivative of the same vector with respect to another frame of reference then always this uh, particular equation comes in handy for us because then uh, I, I can easily calculate this but the difficult thing instead of calculating it from fundamental principles I can use this relationship then to calculate it as long as of course I should know two additional points of information which is essentially your omega and the ability to take its cross product with that vector uh, whose uh, derivative we are interested in. So the key to differentiation of vectors um, in rotating frames of reference is that in addition to providing information about uh, the uh, rigid body's angular motion it is giving us this particular equation as a uh, tool to take derivatives in other frames of reference which we might not know the derivative or it might be difficult to get the derivative. And uh, another special case is where we, we were talking about special cases where the second term goes to 0, there are special cases where the first term goes to 0. In other words, this vector q is fixed in a particular frame of reference. It could be for example, a rigid body and two points um, uh, on the rigid body which are connected to each other by a vector and they are always uh, going to be related to each other with respect to uh, that frame of reference fixed to the aircraft. Um, they are going to be the same. So, in other words, um, let us say um, uh, this is a position vector between um, the nose of the aircraft and the tip of the wing, the starboard tip of the wing, let us say. Then that is not going to change unless and until, uh, for example, you have a variable sweep, 
many fighter aircraft for example would have variable sweep uh, because typically uh, the configuration for most uh, fighter aircraft the wing is a delta wing uh, primarily because you want to have minimal um, wave drag so to reduce that at higher Mach numbers but the same aircraft is not going to keep flying at supersonic speeds all the time it's going to fly at lower speeds as well where the um, large sweep of a delta wing is not um, something which is optimal so then you do need to kind of uh, reduce the sweep angle and so that is typically done using actuators so for example in that case uh, the vector that I was talking to you about the from an, from the nose of the aircraft to the uh, tip of one of the wings the starboard let's say that's the right um, uh, because the port is the left so then that particular vector um, when uh, it's not a variable sweep aircraft can be a constant or even in a variable sweep uh, kind of a fighter aircraft it can be a constant as long as that actuator is not deployed uh, but um, in, in general it can change but if, if there is a vector which is fixed to the aircraft then you can see that uh, the first uh, term here will go to zero for that vector but this uh, the one with respect to the earth will not go to zero and how it is uh, not zero is because of this particular cross product between the angular velocity of the aircraft with respect to the earth uh, crossed with that position vector between two points on the aircraft which are both fixed to the rigid body and remain fixed right so if a vector is fixed which obviously means that it's not changing uh, with respect to uh, a, a particular frame a then you can get uh, the uh, derivative with respect to another frame just by taking the cross product uh, so there's no term to add either so you just uh, have a cross product to take so this is kind of the equivalence that you see of this operator is a differential operator id by dt operating on a vector q now this id by dt is equivalent to an omega cross so that's because if you uh, blind out q because this is valid for um, an arbitrary vector q which is fixed in a so for any vector which is fixed in a very clearly you can see that and of course omega um, uh, though i have not put the subscripts essentially is once again the same thing um, the angular velocity of the uh, frame of reference or the rigid body in which q is fixed with respect to the one in which I am interested in taking the derivative. So uh, very important to see that this id by dt uh, uh, differential operator becomes a cross product operator on the right hand side which is just an omega cross. Both are operating on the uh, variable q. Okay, now um, let's try to see if we can kind of utilize that um, uh, in, in a particular uh, specific case of Q. So there Q was any arbitrary vector, um, but here let's say we're talking about the velocity. And um, you know that velocity is always defined with respect to um, uh, time derivative of a position vector. And that position vector is of a particular point whose velocity you're interested in and uh, it obviously has to come from some point and that point is typically a point which is fixed in a frame of reference um, which is uh, inertial usually because eventually you would want to uh, take this kinematics forward to kinetics uh, where you want to apply newton's laws and or euler's laws which are equivalent of uh, newton's laws for rotation in either case what you're going to uh, do is to take time derivatives of this uh, uh, position vector first uh, derivative for the velocity and second derivative for the acceleration but the important point to remember is what I have underlined and put in bold over here that it could be any point any point which is fixed on this frame of reference so O there is no nothing sacrosanct about O or you can kind of move O uh, to different points as long as it is fixed in the inertial frame of reference i it doesn't matter so um, uh, let's say for example if it's the earth fixed frame i could fix it uh, let's say at bangalore airport or atlanta airport doesn't matter so either way i'm going to have a uh, way to connect it to that particular aircraft and then uh, deal with it so that's the important point to remember so now uh, let's go ahead so now the velocity that we are interested in as i always said uh, is never of a rigid body as a whole but of a particle or a point it could that particle or point could be a part of a rigid body so let's take that velocity that we are interested in to be of a point p uh, which is moving uh, in general with respect to i the inertial frame of reference that is in the question now how is the velocity of p in i defined 
Yeah. Like it's defined by the, the time derivative of displacement, which is defined by the initial time derivative. Right. Uh, time derivative of the displacement. Right. So can you qualify that displacement? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Like, what is the displacement that you're talking about? Position? Yeah. Position vector, right? Yeah. So position vector, because you're interested in the velocity of P, it's obviously the position vector of P, yeah. but with respect to what? a point in the inertial frame of reference. So, with respect to O, which could be any arbitrary point uh, fixed on the frame of reference, right? That's correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so uh, we, though we use this word displacement quite often in uh, structural mechanics kind of a course, here we are more uh, talking about uh, the position vector because essentially uh, we're going to utilize the natural coordinate system or the intrinsic coordinate system that we, uh, uh, we talked about in the previous class. So whenever we are doing that, it really uh, is useful to think out uh, in that way, right? So uh, as you rightly said, it's essentially the time derivative of a particular vector and that vector is the position vector. Position vector of the point who, whose velocity you're interested in, therefore P. So again, uh, this could be written as P slash O, okay? Instead of OP, I can write this as P slash O. And then, um, so I'm interested in the velocity of the part point P and um, I uh, have to take the derivative therefore of the position vector of the point but with respect to what that position vector is that position vector is always with respect to uh, another point which is fixed in the frame of reference and once again I need to stress that that point uh, need not have any particular qualification except the fact that it is fixed in the frame of reference to be any point which is fixed in the frame of reference you typically take it to be that which is most convenient uh, to define your ROP simplistically and or easily take that derivative with respect to time of ROP. So you typically um, identify that point O in that manner, right? So uh, the same thing, this is the definition of course, the first equals, but the second equals is just to uh, introduce the, uh, or reintroduce the um, notations that we have been using, that the dot refers to the time derivative. Um, uh, to be uh, complete, you should always mention the superscript, um, pre-superscript as the frame of reference with respect to which you are taking that dot or the time derivative, right? So, uh, and uh, in cases where it is understood that it is inertial frame of reference, you should mention it a priori so that that becomes the default and so when you do not have any pre-superscript over here, it means that you are taking that time derivative with respect to i. Okay, so now um, we can try to uh, utilize this for certain um, practically useful situations. So let's say you have a rigid body, um, in general it is moving, it, which means that uh, there is some translation and rotation, but as I said the translation typically has to be given in terms of a particular point on the rigid body, you can't generally say translation of a rigid body. So now let's say you know the translation of a particular point um, in terms of its position, how it changes with time, how its velocity changes with time, how its acceleration changes with time, because once you know the position, you can take the time derivatives uh, with respect to i and you can get all of that, right? But now, uh, do I need to do that for every point on the rigid body? Because uh, typically a rigid body uh, is a continuous structure made out of infinite number of points. Obviously, that is uh, uh, something unthinkable, right? So, uh, for example, if I know the velocity or a position vector of a particular point, uh, how can I find the velocity or acceleration for that matter of a, another point? Uh, do I need to do everything from scratch again? Is there a way that we can utilize what we have uh, already talked about in uh, today's class? You can look at it relative to the point you know information Correct, yeah. So Mm -hmm. You can just define everything in terms of A because A is already defined in terms of like the origin of the Right, right, absolutely. So essentially what you are saying is that uh, I know that these are not equal but they are um, uh, having a, a difference which is in terms of the angular velocity crossed with the uh, vector between those two points. If 
uh, v happens to be the position vector okay so in this particular that arbitrary uh, vector we are replacing it by the position vector so therefore it becomes a cross product of that vector so you know everything about a in terms of its motion uh, a is also a point of uh, the rigid body b another point let's say c is also a point of the same rigid body b um, now i know the as kush pointed out the uh, the position vector of c with respect to a and therefore i also know the uh, angular velocity of b with respect to i and therefore i can use these two to calculate the uh, motion of c uh, in general with respect to i so that's essentially what we are going to be talking about on this slide so here we are going to be relating velocities in the inertial frame of reference of two points p and q both of which are uh, not fixed with respect to i but they are fixed with respect to another body which is a in our our example i is of course the earth and a is the aircraft so these are two points like in the example that i was talking to you about uh, let's say a point fixed to the nose of the aircraft and a point fixed to the tip of the starboard wing so then you are talking of for that particular vector um, in in a, a constant sweep uh, kind of a situation so then what how do you uh, actually deal with so maybe i know the uh, velocity of the nose uh, can i find the velocity at the uh, starboard uh, wing tip so that's essentially what we are trying to do and um, uh, this uh, of course these two points on the nose of the aircraft or on the uh, tip of the uh, starboard wing are uh, essentially on the surface of this rigid body right uh, but the same thing is valid for uh, uh, anything within the rigid body as well which is why i am saying on the rigid body or in the rigid body or even with respect to the rigid body i can say on slash in slash wrt uh, with respect to uh, the rigid body a so all of this is kind of valid okay so as long as um, that point inside the aircraft is also kind of fixed uh, with respect to the aircraft it's not moving it's let's say it's not a particular path passengers uh, body part uh, point or uh, let's say uh, a cargo inside or something unless it is of course um, uh, locked on to the floor uh, in some way uh, through a particular phase of the flight so this is uh, essentially what we are talking about the relationship between um, the velocities of a point uh, who whose motion we are aware of and the velocity of a point uh, whose motion we would like to know uh, are not aware of so this q for example in our uh, example that i have been illustrating uh, uh, i've been repeating is q could be the nose of the aircraft and um, p could be the uh, tip of the uh, starboard wing so uh, i want to find velocity of one point on the aircraft which is fixed to the aircraft with respect to the velocity uh, of another point also fixed to the aircraft whose velocity i already know so all that i need to do is to add a term which involves the angular velocity of the aircraft with respect to the inertial frame of reference crossed with as kush pointed out the uh, position vector from q to p why is it the position vector in this case how is it kind of related to the equation that we already introduced why should this be r not some other vector remember that equation that we gave was for a arbitrary v or q right so why should it this be uh, r rather than v uh, any other vector uh -huh. yeah uh, no let's just uh, recollect what we wrote over there so we had said that i of d q by d is equal to a of the same derivative dq by dt and then i had added the second term over there which is the angular velocity of um, a with respect to i crossed with q i am saying that why am i taking q as r over here what is what has changed so that i have taken this particular q uh, as r over here yeah so that is it because q is any vector on the mm -hmm. on uh yeah you kind of getting there but uh, a lot more to travel yeah um if you just let q be r in this example uh -huh. dr dt is velocity which you have exactly have exactly yeah. so oh. it's it's a it's a question of how I have i changed the first term uh, on the uh, the term on the left hand side and the first term on the right hand side what have i done i have replaced these time derivatives with respect to uh, instead of with a velocity right 
um, what, what is the time, the time derivative of which quantity will become the velocity? It is of the position vector, right? So therefore, uh, what I'm doing is I'm applying this general thing which is valid for any arbitrary i and d and any arbitrary q to a specific q and that specific q happens to be the position vector. So that's in fact, hmm, I should have gone one step earlier and said that this is of, um, this is the d by dt of oq and this is the d by dt of op with respect to i and then I know the velocity de de definition which I we repeated in the previous slide and therefore we replace these two time derivatives as the corresponding velocities in i and a. So, uh, so th that's essentially what we are talking about over here. So, when we do that, obviously uh, the difference between these two velocities of two points fixed becomes your uh, cross product of the angular velocity. Once again, they can be different, that is vp and vq can be different from each other only when those three conditions are met, neither omega is 0 nor r is 0 nor which of course means that it is the same point, okay, q and p are identical if r equal to 0 or of course as Atharva pointed out, if these two are parallel to each other in which case the cross product goes to 0, right. So, uh, what is the utility of this? This is something again that we are going to use time and again this particular equation. Uh, it is good to kind of even remember it because um, uh, th this is something that makes derivations much much more simpler otherwise you start everything from scratch from the first principles fundamentals then uh, it takes much more uh, time to derive. So, um, but essentially it is an application of this particular more general rule. So, what we are uh, saying is that we know the velocity of one particular point which might be easier to determine in some way uh, usually it is the center of mass. So, uh, Q uh, many a times in many examples that you will be working out even in your homework you will see that um, this VQ that we are talking about is the velocity of the center of mass of the rigid body and of some other point on the rigid body is what we are uh, trying to get by not again calculating everything from uh, taking a time derivative uh, but rather than uh, that using the velocity of one point on the rigid body and adding a term to it which involves the angular velocity of that rigid body crossed with RQP and that angular velocity of course has to be with the same inertial frame in which you are interested in the velocities as well. So, knowing the velocity of just one point on the rigid body and the latters of course that, it, that means the rigid body is angular velocity, you can uh, find the velocity of any other point on the same rigid body with respect to of course the inertial frame of reference uh, with respect to which everything else is in this uh, slide or equation. So, now uh, we are kind of done with um, introducing various concepts related to angular velocity at least as far as how, how much we need for this particular course. Uh, there are other very interesting things that uh, go with it uh, uh, including the example that I started off with where I said that if I apply the roll, pitch and yaw in different order uh, you end up with final orientation quite different that is something that is uh, much easier tract much more easily tractable once you introduce the concept of angular velocity. But we need to um, go beyond that, take another time derivative of the velocity to get to acceleration or another time derivative of the angular velocity to get to the angular acceleration and um, uh, in McGill and King this is uh, essentially what you see in section 3.5, um, but we will only be looking at certain uh, important extracts from that. So, um, angular acceleration uh, uh, like any other acceleration is the derivative of the corresponding velocity. So, if it is of a translational velocity, we know that it is the uh, translational acceleration is the derivative of that, but here we are talking of angular acceleration. So, obviously, it is of the angular uh, velocity and we are taking the time derivative of that and just like uh, the notation that we used for the uh, angular velocity of A in I either by putting these uh, uh, superscripts of uh, pre and post or uh, putting it as a slash i the same uh, notation is valid for uh, the angular acceleration as well. So, omega is kind of a standard notation you will find almost all the textbooks and literature as far as angular velocity is concerned and similarly alpha is something that you will find uh, very frequently used for um, ac angular accelerations. Uh, so, it uh, in many uh, other subjects we typically use alpha for an angle. So, we try to avoid using alpha for an angle in uh, this in dynamics because uh, it is kind of reserved for uh, the angular acceleration. So, uh, typically we um, almost always uh, denote it by that. Uh, so, 
uh, that is again as I said just like uh, the translational acceleration defined as time derivative with respect to time derivative with respect to a particular inertial frame of reference of the translational velocity here uh, the translational velocity's place goes to the angular velocity of the same a slash i is what you are seeing the repetition over here but the derivative is with respect to i so that's another important thing to remember just like uh, to get to uh, uh, but remember there's no such equivalent of um, uh, taking the derivative of a theta vector to get to omega unlike in a position vector remembered for translation there was a two-step process we went from position vector took its time derivative to get to the velocity vector took its time derivative to get to the acceleration vector. all time derivatives being in the inertial frame of reference here we are only talking about the second step that is going from angular velocity to the angular acceleration we didn't talk about going from a theta to a omega okay so which is as i said again because theta behaves not like a vector much more complicated animal to deal with so uh, we just um, uh, introduce the angular velocity concept in a much more simplistic way by saying there is a common ac uh, line between the two rigid bodies which are rotating with respect to each other and changing their orientation with respect to time and we call that the axis of rotation and then uh, we said that either it uh, the uh, angular velocity vector could be on this way or that way but its magnitude yes we defined it as a dot so we said that omega is theta dot right so uh, so the overall theta that is there which is some some kind of a combination of your uh, pitch and yaw and roll so there is a certain combination that we are talking about that theta which is along the resultant direction which is essentially what we are talking about but that resultant cannot be so easily found uh, unless we introduce certain concepts uh, related to rotation like Euler rotation or Rodrigue's rotation etc so then uh, but those are little more complex compared to uh, what we are used to with vectors right and again in terms of the shortened notation once again a d by dt is a dot and um, wherever you don't put the prefix the uh, default is understood to be i but i would prefer that you always put it so that uh, it's kind of explicit and you know what you're uh, actually doing right so then um, this is something uh, very interestingly varied irrespective of whether it's a 3d motion or a 2d motion so 2d um, and in many cases this rotation pure rotation problem can be dealt with as a 2d problem because once you have identified the axis of rotation which is uh, the direction of your omega vector so then you you see that um, perpendicular to that axis of rotation or the angular velocity vector is a plane and uh, the motion is essentially taking place in that plane because the rotation is entirely um, in that particular plane so it's not happening perfect because otherwise the angular velocity vector would change uh, in problems where this is changing with respect to time again uh, the uh, analogy you can remember is in terms of the binormal that we introduced we said that um, when you're talking of a natural or intrinsic system we had two vectors tangential and um, normal in addition we introduced a binormal for 2d motion that binormal was kind of not very useful because it's always constant always perpendicular to the plane in which the 2d motion was taking place right so same thing uh, here also you can see that once you have identified the angular velocity vector it's somewhat like the binormal vector in some sense um, the binormal is more with respect to space this is something that we are talking about with respect to time and this angular velocity vector will then uh, reduce use a lot of 3d problems of pure rotation into just a 2d uh, rotation problem as long as you're able to identify the actual direction of the angular velocity okay so that's why this particular equation is valid both for 3d as well as 2d motion okay now the simplest case is of course your, where you have identified that axis of rotation and introduce a Cartesian or let's say a cylindrical coordinate system such that you have the um, rotation along k so in other words you introduce uh, uh, after identifying which is the axis of rotation um, then you introduce the uh, new coordinate system along that axis of rotation we introduce k uh, k hat and uh, the unit vector and which means that of course uh, the um, that's a z coordinate parallel to that right so then of course uh, all of the rotation is happening in the x y plane that is the i hat and j hat direction and therefore uh, think material points are changing with respect to that so then it's very very easy to express the angular velocity as its magnitude times the direction the unit vector right so the magnitude is theta dot which is some form as i said of a resultant of all the thetas that can possibly be taking place and then you have 
k hat okay in many uh, problems that you will see in the homework etc this theta dot is directly up front defined for you in a very very simple kind of a rotation about for let's say of a motor about an axis etc and so then it becomes straightforward to write this but this can be done even for the most generic case that's the most important thing just that it becomes a little tough to determine a priori what is this k direction which is the axis of rotation uh, direction therefore uh, you need to sometimes deal with um, a little more complex situation but uh, many cases that you will see in your homeworks as well as uh, through the course will involve simple rotations where you can identify the axis of rotation call that as k hat so that all other uh, particle or point motions or translations that you are interested in will all be in the along the i and the j right so then uh, once that is there it's very clear that your k hat is not changing with respect to time in general motion your k hat will be a function of time okay so in other words it's an instantaneous angular velocity which will be along that particular k that i've determined then it's possible that k itself is changing with respect to time in a general motion but in the simple rotation uh, what we qualify it as a, or we define it as is such that your k hat is a constant only theta dot is a function of time k hat is a constant so in other words this vector the angular velocity vector is um, having a constant direction but it can have changing magnitude right so when you have that it's very easy to take its time derivative to get to alpha by using this particular equation on the top and uh, alpha just becomes a theta double dot times uh, k hat right so next let's um, look at so that's as far as angular acceleration is concerned now we want translational acceleration so this is of any uh, point and this point as um, could be either a particle or it could be a point which is fixed uh, in a particular frame of re uh, reference or a rigid body so this for this point p which is moving in a certain frame of reference i we already defined this um, velocity of p in i just repeating an equation which we saw even in today's class where o as we said could be any arbitrary point which is fixed in a so now we want to obviously move from this velocity to the acceleration so obviously it's just a time derivative of that with respect to the inertial frame of reference so how do we go about defining this acceleration of p and i it's quite straightforward it's a id by dt of that particular quantity but we also want to take advantage of some of the things that we have uh, already learned from the point of view of um, angular velocities and angular acceleration so that we need don't need to kind of uh, recalculate everything from the fundamental of first principles right so that's um, uh, first of all the definition we'll go to that uh, utilizing the angular velocity and angular acceleration in the next slide but if you look at it it's kind of identical to the earlier definition you are replacing the position vector from o to p instead as the velocity of a particular point p and uh, therefore the velocity uh, on the left hand side becomes the acceleration now and uh, once again uh, the simplified notations in terms of replacing an id by dt by a dot um, under, understanding that the dot is uh, with respect to an inertial frame of reference as the default and which in turn using the previous uh, result vp uh, itself is rp dot r op dot and therefore um, vp dot or ap that is the acceleration of point p becomes the double dot or uh, double uh, time derivative of the position vector from a point any arbitrary point fixed in the inertial frame of reference to that point we are interested in either a particle or a particular point on a rigid body right so now uh, uh, there are certain problems in which you will find that the two points fixed on the moving rigid body is again the same example that we were considering the nose and the starboard wing tip so uh, let's say p and q are the names given to those two points um, as i said once again it could be either on the surface or inside that particular rigid body it may not even be a material point for example if it's a hollow um, uh, interior for example an aircraft it could have a hollow interior with the cg actually at a point which is within the cabin which is actually air so it's essentially not even a material point of the aircraft so uh, it's all that's also possible and also you can just uh, think of it as some point which is kind of related to that particular aircraft which is also moving along with the aircraft some kind of uh, uh, point uh, outside the body as well so either on the surface within the surface or even out of the surface but essentially it's fixed with respect to a particular rigid body a right uh, in our case the aircraft so 
now the um, uh, the useful thing of course is that uh, not only velocities but even accelerations of these two points are related already we have seen this uh, uh, huge utility of the concept that we introduced that if we know the uh, velocity of one point we can get the other one without uh, going to fundamental principles but by just invoking the angular velocity of the rigid body on which these two points are uh, fixed right same thing we can do with accelerations that's the purpose of this slide that we can do what we did with angular velocity with acceleration just that the expression is going to be a little more complicated because not only going to involve omega but also alpha which we just introduced the angular acceleration as well so you're going to have more terms the velocity had just two terms the velocity of the point who, uh, whose motion we know plus the angular velocity crossed with the position vector uh, from that uh, uh, from the uh, known point or points motion which we know to the uh, other point whose uh, motion we are interested in and we don't know so that's um, that cross product is just additional to one additional term that we had but here in the acceleration we're going to have two additional terms and this is going to run um, in parallel to what we did uh, derived um, I think in the early part of his last class uh, where we uh, talked about uh, the um, the different kinds of accelerations involved without a double dots that is the um, centripetal and the Coriolis so something similar to that you will see uh, over here as well when we get into the acceleration so already we have shown this that the um, from the velocity of a point whose motion we know Q that we can get to the velocity of another point on the same rigid body both being fixed p and q being fixed to that rigid body a i can get the velocity of that and uh, once again remember that the default here is that there's a pre superscript of i so both these velocities are with respect to the inertial frame of reference right now the only difference between those two is just in terms of the cross product of the angular velocity of a and i with the position vector from q to p so this order is very important to remember so even though this is a result that we are just getting from the previous slide remember that it is q to p okay so not p to q if it is p to q then this would become a negative sign so it's always from the unknown point uh, or point whose motion is unknown to the point whose motion is known okay so uh, that sorry the other way around right so it's from the point whose motion is known to the point uh, whose motion is uh, unknown so keep the keep this order in mind yeah uh, it's always going from the known to the unknown so essentially from an input to an output so that's a mnemonic that you could use okay then uh, the final result for the acceleration is all uh, that you do is to take the time derivative of this particular equation with respect to i what do you get when you take the time derivative of uh, vp with respect to i obviously you get ap with respect to i similarly your vq just becomes aq now the uh, more uh, uh, non-trivial kind case is with the second term because it involves a product uh, in particular cross product and we have seen that when we have vector cross products and take a time derivative it is something similar to uv you're taking a derivative becomes udv plus vdu so you have a product rule but retaining the type of product that is the cross it remains across okay once across remains across and so that's essentially what you're talking about second term very easy to see it's the time uh, derivative of omega with respect to i which we are which we have already defined as alpha which is the angular velocity irrespective of whether it's a simple rotation or not remember so this is a generic thing that omega dot is equal to alpha just that omega dot um, omega omega dot that is alpha are all much easier to get in the case of simple rotation because your ang uh, the direction is not changing only the magnitude changes so you can put that in terms of a theta dot and a theta double dot but this is a more generic thing even when there is no simple rotation you're not uh, your uh, uh, axis of rotation is varying with respect to time even then this particular the both of these equations are valid right so uh, obviously the time derivative of the second term in the first equation is going to give you uh, two terms one where you take the derivative of this which is over here and the uh, where the second term remains as it is and the other one where you keep this as it is that is omega and then you take the time derivative of this now time derivative of this we have already shown uh, 
is just an omega cross RQP, the first term going to 0 because Q and T are both fixed on that particular rigid body. Therefore, uh, the time derivative of uh, RQP is with respect to A, the frame A is 0. So, that, that's why you have only one term. You do not have uh, another term which would have come for an arbitrary uh, vector over here. right? So, it just becomes omega cross uh, RQP. Now, if you look at it um, uh, from uh, in terms of uh, comparing with let us say the, um, the polar coordinates or even the cylindrical coordinates that we introduced, then you see that uh, there is a term there we were talking always about uh, in terms of a theta dot squared. Right? So, theta dot squared which was associated with the radial direction was essentially coming from the centripetal acceleration. Right? So, something similar to that, remember that in a simple rotation case your omega will be theta dot k. Right? So, this will be theta dot k and this will be theta dot k. Um, this is a cross product, will this go to 0 because both are parallel? Atharva? Yeah, yeah, right. So w why why not? Because there is a third axis uh, that you can have it. So if you have W cross R, mm -hmm. uh, that reveals like um, uh, perpendicular axis. W cross that perpendicular axis can be another perpendicular axis. Right. Right, right. So, so that is uh, uh, the right reason, um, but it also uh, goes with the bracketing that we have over here, right. So, um, if the brackets over over this, then obviously it would go to 0, just that this operation has to be done first a priori before you get into that. So, then therefore, uh, uh, the result of what is in the bracket will be perpendicular not only to r, but also to omega. And therefore, um, the cross product you are taking of, of two vectors which are not parallel to each other, right. So, therefore, that is that's what you would do. For example, if this is the radial direction and if this is the k direction for, for a simple rotation, you would get a k cross uh, r that you are uh, essentially having that would be along the e theta uh, kind of direction, positive or negative depending upon the right hand rule that you have. And then, uh, if this is along e theta and this is along k, then k, th k cross uh, e theta um, would essentially result in your er, which is the radial direction. So, essentially this is uh, this term will um, if in that case where uh, the uh, if you are having the uh, polar coordinate system such that it is going from q towards outwards and towards p then essentially you are talking about uh, something which is going in that particular direction is essentially radial and so that is why I was talking to you about not only a theta dot squared being involved over here, but also in terms of the direction it is along the radial direction which is why it is centripetal. But um, uh, can you uh, recollect the difference between centripetal and uh, centrifugal that we talked about uh, in terms of the sign, uh, uh, which direction it goes? One goes radially outward or inward? They're just negatives of each other because they're different opposite frames of the Right, right, right. So, uh, from this sign over here, can you kind of recognize this to be centripetal or centrifugal? Yeah, uh, so you do have certain freedom in terms of how you are defining the positive and negative, but as far as the radi uh, the um, uh, the radial coordinate is concerned, it's always going to be outward norm, uh, uh, outward from the center, right? So, uh, so if it's like centrifugal, yeah, yeah. So because it's positive, it is centrifugal. But remember our uh, kind of arrogant statement that it's fake, fictitious. So, so is there something that? Uh, uh, we are missing in terms of yes, what we are looking at. Right. Negative centripetal, yeah, it's, a, it's a one way of looking at it. But um, is it really uh, going to remain positive after you take these cross products? Oh, the cross product goes in the opposite yeah. yeah. So, because this is involving, let us say, a k, positive k crossed with a uh, radial direction, outward radial, which is positive r. Okay, so then you have to use the right hand thumb rule to get that, and eventually, of course, again use that when you're taking omega crossed uh, with that. Right. So, 
you will see that um, for simple case we will show that indeed it's negative so once again it's the centripetal not the centrifugal uh, so we weren't all that wrong at least we haven't been proven wrong as yet right so then this is an important uh, term that uh, we were not aware of earlier which is coming primarily because of the angular accelerations that is involved which is a concept that we introduced uh, just now in our previous slide so now uh, what is the utility of this very similar to the utility of the first equation we said that if we know the velocity of one point the other uh, points velocity any other points velocity for that matter every point on the body can then be calculated by adding simple uh, cross products of the angular velocity and the position vectors to those uh, points whose motion we are interested in from the point whose motion we already know yes sir so what if Yeah, so then um, see first of all we are right now dealing with kinematics where we have not yet gotten into kinetics the only the kinetic laws like Newton's laws or Euler's laws are going to be invalid uh, in a non-inertial frame of reference as far as these equations are concerned doesn't matter whether it's an inertial frame of reference or uh, so even though I'm in this example I'm talking about an earth fixed approximate inertial frame of reference or A, uh, re remember my um, uh, emphasis in the beginning that V is any arbitrary vector and I and A are any arbitrary frames of reference. Uh, I am not uh, imposing the fact that it has to be inertial or not. Okay, So it does not matter. It is essentially we are talking of the relative motion between two uh, uh, bodies or between two frames of reference or one frame of reference and one rigid body. So I am really not imposing any condition on that as, as yet. Yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this is for any generic motion of any two okay. frames of reference. They can be translating with respect to each other. They can be rotating in any arbitrary manner with respect to each other. Doesn't matter. They could be accelerating as well and angularly accelerating as well. Both of them, and you'd still have all of this valid. The only invalidity comes when we go to chapter two after we finish chapter three. Um, what if the two points can you repeat that? Uh -huh. aren't a set or away from each other like they're moving they have some velocity with respect to each other yeah yeah, yeah. then this is not valid so this is valid only when uh, those two points are fixed but we will get into a case where um, eventually either in this class or next class we will look at point where these points are moving like for example i was talking to you about that uh, swept only wing uh, where the variable sweep is there yeah so only when they're both the both points are fixed to On the same Right, right. So, uh, of course, they are moving with respect to I, but they are on A, they are, uh, their orientation and their distance is all fixed in the frame, frame A. Essentially, uh, the very fact that we are qualifying it as a rigid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, other frame of reference means? Like you have like this, right? And then you're doing like that. Then if you want the relation between this point and this point, it doesn't matter if this frame or if it's moving like that. As long as they're still constant, like with respect to each other on this rigid body, then it's moving. Yeah. Can we, in case, use going with respect to you, can we take P as the reference and then say, uh, no, we need to take the velocities of uh, p with respect to q also into account. Right. Just that it is going to be kind of uh, not as it is, but you need to kind of modify that. Yeah. So this this is something valid if and only if uh, p and q are both fixed on that particular body uh, a, the, uh, whose uh, angular velocity or angular acceleration we have de denoted by omega or alpha here. It's not that we can't do it, it just involves a little more terms. Yeah. 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 Anything else on this? Yeah. Yeah. So you're still not convinced of that? No, no, no. I'm convinced. I just yeah. I, I don't know how this how we can apply apply that to the question. Yeah, yeah. We'll okay. We'll check out yeah, 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 yeah. We'll find out soon. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Because like this, I kind of understand using the equations. But uh -huh. like, what exactly are we doing when we're doing? That? Also, this kind of proves yeah. like if Q and P are the same point, then the relative vector is zero. If the relative vector is zero, every term goes to zero, zero. except yeah. for the first one, yeah. which means the acceleration. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that's the whole idea of this. Uh, knowing the acceleration of one point, that is Q, uh, we are able to find the acceleration of any other point because P is any al other arbitrary point, which is also fixed on the same rigid body. Uh, but of course, you need two pieces of information. Unlike here, you need just one piece of information. That's the angular velocity. Here, you need both angular velocity as well as the angular acceleration. Of course, if you have one, you can fi figure out the other by taking the time derivative. Now, uh, this is what we were talking about, the second term in the acceleration, that is your omega cross uh, within brackets omega cross RQP. So essentially, um, as a, uh, I think I already asked this question, so in terms of sign, and therefore uh, we will look at it uh, more explicitly in the next slide. Yes, Just Satan. To clarify, um, this will, if you have the uh, angular acceleration and velocity of P, um, and then you want Q, this will give the angular acceleration with respect to uh, the initial frame of reference, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. What if you have the angular velocity and acceleration of the rigid body, not mm -hmm. of the point? Like the, the, the omega and alpha are of yeah. the body, right? Yeah, always, okay. always. Okay, so this is an important point to remember that when you're talking of angular motion, rotations, we can never talk of the rotation of a point. It doesn't make sense, yes. right? A particle or, uh, can only move, it cannot rotate. So that's by definition because it's, um, it's having a zero size. Right? So, zero size, there is no point in rotation. Right? Just like an axis or a line cannot rotate about itself, but it can rotate in other two directions. Right? So, a rotation about itself does not have any uh, specific meaning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, let us go to the next slide. Yeah. So, this is two points uh, fixed on the rigid. Uh, so, essentially, uh, kind of uh, getting down to a uh, special case of what we did in the previous slide. We were talking of general 3D motion. Now, we are talking of uh, 2D rigid body dynamics, um, which is where, of course, um, you are going to uh, talk of simple rotations. And therefore, uh, you are going to have an angular velocity, which is given by uh, omega equal to theta dot times k, where k hat uh, is not changing with respect to time. Time. It's it's a constant, and therefore all the motion that you're interested in is in the ij plane uh, or the e theta e t plane. Um, or if you're looking at natural or intrinsic coordinates, you're essentially looking at the e t hat and the e n hat uh, plane, not in the binormal direction e b hat. Okay, so. Let us try to simplify uh, the equations that we already have. So, for 2D uh, rigid body dynamics, your angular velocity and the angular acceleration in the z are both in the z direction, that is, um, k hat is the unit vector along them, uh, while the position vector of all points that you are interested in, um, because any point which is away from it, you just project it down to the x, y plane and things will work because that is the kind of motion we are having, which is a rotation about k hat and therefore the position vector on the other hand is in the x, y plane, it has i hat and j hat terms, whereas the uh, omega and alpha have only a k hat term. So, in this case, um, what is the simplicity that we can go for? We had uh, written, remember in the previous slides, this as just a vector omega, an arbitrary vector omega, which could have in general I, I had j hat and k hat components, but here we are talking of only a k hat component being present. Okay? So, is it um, introducing the coordinate system and axis first and then coming to this? No, it is essentially trying to understand from the problem perspective uh, how to orient your k hat such that because you know it is already it is a priori that it is a kind of a simple rotation kind of a problem. So, you are trying to orient that k hat along the axis of rotation which is known and therefore it becomes a 2D problem. So, your omega k hat uh, crossed with r q p right. So, the only difference is that instead of a general omega, we are putting it as a uh, 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 magnitude omega times the uh, direction k hat over here. Okay. So, now uh, let us simplify the other uh, equation we had which is for acceleration. Uh, that is the translational acceleration of the same point P uh, in terms of uh, the point whose motion we know, namely Q. So, that is uh, 
just going to be adding certain terms to the acceleration of q and remember both these accelerations by default are in the inertial frame of reference just like the velocities were also defined in the inertial frame of reference okay so now um, once again we had two additional terms one involving angular velocity omega the other involving angular acceleration alpha just that we are going to replace those generic omega vectors and alpha vectors by omega k hat and alpha k hat respectively where omega and k uh, alpha now become scalar quantities which are the magnitudes of the angular velocity and the angular acceleration respectively right so now if that is the case then you can simplify this further because now omega is a scalar quantity so i can take it out of the bracket and there's already an omega sitting out of the bracket so i get an omega squared and now um, things will become a little more clearer in terms of uh, the question that we asked in one of the previous slides at the end of the previous slide in terms of whether it is centrifugal or uh, centripetal because now i can take a k cross r and then so i can keep that and then you can see that this omega squared is coming out and then this is an r qp because k cross r qp is going to have an e theta and then e theta is, is going to be uh, pre-crossed with k, k essentially uh, because you are following a dextral triad you are ending up with this negative sign so that's how you can see that this is still centripetal not centrifugal right so uh, that's as far as the second term is concerned now coming to the third term uh, not making any changes between those two lines you're retaining it as it is the only simplicity uh, going from the second line uh, that is the first line in the acceleration to the second line is in terms of simplifying the second term right so now uh, we can substitute the angular velocity and acceleration uh, there is angular acceleration there is omega and alpha in terms of the de derivatives of the rotation angle remember we already showed that omega is theta dot and uh, alpha is omega dot which in turn is theta double dot so we can just substitute that and um, the velocity therefore becomes um, velocity of p is equal to velocity of q both in the inertial frame of reference uh, the only difference between them is that is a cross product involving a theta dot k hat with the position vector from the point whose information we have to the point whose information we want okay so then similarly you can simplify the acceleration expression as well all that you're uh, doing is substituting once again uh, this omega squared with a theta dot uh, squared and then uh, you're substituting the alpha with the uh, theta double dot and therefore you have uh, this simple relationship so once again you see we're getting closer and closer to what we were we were already having in terms of uh, terms but again we have not introduced any specific uh, coordinate system associated with this as yet uh, just that the theta has come out because we introduced the simple rotation and the axis of rotation was known therefore it kind of looks like the uh, polar coordinate system or the cylindrical coordinate system that we are uh, quite familiar with any questions on this slide okay so let's get to the next topic which also you will need for some of the homework problems uh, i think part c um, maybe a few in part b as well which involves rolling right so rolling is something that um, you're kind of very familiar with uh, rolling a ball or rolling uh, tires and things like that and um, uh, of course uh, i'm talking in front of somebody who's a specialist in contact mechanics uh, so but i'm talking of very fundamental things over here so um, uh, hopefully i'm not making a mistake there so rolling essentially involves certain basic principles of contact um, and um, when you're saying there's no slip um, essentially you're not skidding for example uh, when you're having worn out tires or you're uh, driving over a wet uh, road or a IC road so essentially uh, there's a possibility that there can be a, a uh, skidding that is happening because the friction is kind of uh, too low to handle that and therefore either because the tire is worn out and therefore the coefficient of friction has come down quite a bit between the uh, tire and the road or um, the other way so essentially you are talking of uh, no possibility of skidding or slipping uh, we can of course handle that as well a little little more um, complication in terms of the terms in the equation but uh, we will get to this um, to put it in a very very uh, simplistic manner uh, 
what we are referring to as pure rolling, uh, which means the absence of uh, skidding or slipping, is just this. So, yeah, and again, uh, what I talk about here could be valid for uh, a sphere or a cylinder. Um, we'll kind of generalize it to other situations later. So, for example, you have a road on which either there is a ball, if it's a, 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 a spherical ball, then obviously there's just one point of contact, right? On the other hand, if it's like a tire or whatever, there's a line contact that is there between the uh, surface over here and uh, the uh, tire. Now, suppose I call this uh, point the center of the either the sphere or the uh, cylinder as uh, let's say C. Okay. Now there is a point of contact over there for a sphere and a line. But since we are taking a cross section of that, even if it is a cylinder, we are just in, interested in one particular cross section. So therefore, this just becomes a point, right? So now there's a point P. Um, even though it's the same point, distinguish it as belonging to the uh, tire uh, road. So essentially, um, I can call the same point as P when I am talking about this or a P prime uh, when I am talking about it as belonging to the, uh, to the horizontal surface that I am talking about over here, right? So now let's say I set this uh, in motion to roll. So it is rolling and uh, moving forward. Uh, so there can be rolling with uh, skidding and slipping or there can be uh, rolling uh, which is what we call as pure rolling okay so when you say pure rolling we are essentially uh, this is equivalent to saying no this is not happening right so now what this essentially means is that as this goes around so there is no relative velocity between these two points, the P and the P prime, which maintain such that, see, this particular point over here will now, because it's at the center, is uh, like the axle of a tire, is essentially moving in a horizontal plane. It's essentially having only translational motion, this particular point C, right? So now, um, let's say this completes one's complete uh, rotation, one revolution, that is. So obviously, that if this is the the radius of this let's say the distance is r not let's say so now then therefore the circumference of this is of course 2 pi r not right so if it has rotated taken one full revolution so after one revolution what would happen is that this would have moved if it is pure rolling there is no skidding then your c would have also moved by the same distance that is 2 pi r naught. Okay, so uh, this is essentially what we mean by pure rolling. That is, there is no uh, skidding or rolling, right? So if there is skidding or rolling, let's say in the direction, it's possible that the point C has moved a little more than um, 2 pi r naught because 2 pi r naught is based on the fact that these two speeds are one and the same of speed of p and p prime and therefore essentially uh, you're saying that any point on the circumference is having a speed that is the magnitude of the velocity same as that of point c yes so pure rolling is the translation translational energy matches the rotational basically mm. of c but if it's skidding that means the translation was more than what the rotation was right uh, no no um, let's not get into oops. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, that's not complicated. We'll get to energy methods uh, soon, but uh, it's kind of difficult to uh, say that with what we know so far. Okay. So, but but essentially, what we are saying is that you are still in not even not even introduced kinetics, not even forces and the laws of motion. Right. So here we are talking purely of the geometry of motion, the purely the description of motion. From the point of view of the description of motion, we are saying that throughout this motion, essentially your p and p prime. Of course, the actual point is going to change, right? So very soon you're going to have one point over here and one point over here which are going to coincide. Okay. 
the same material point on the tire or the same material point on the road okay we are just letting it to uh, be the contact point so and uh, prime essentially refer to the same point actually called as the contact and in the case of a cylinder it's a contact line but uh, taking a slice that we are interested in as a 2d motion uh, once again becomes a point a point on that contact line right so now we are saying that the speeds of uh, p and p prime are the same so essentially that's what uh, is happening so in other words you're actually if you're looking of reference actually the road is not moving right so your p prime is not having any velocity so instantaneously that particular point is not having any velocity is what we are essentially trying to say so essentially what um, would happen is that the friction is sufficient in order to make it stick to the ground at a point which is what we are saying uh, no skidding or no uh, slipping and essentially it's pure rolling so all the problems that you have um, are associated with this condition that there's no slipping or skidding so yeah okay so i have uh, this same picture over here so this is uh, having a angular velocity uh, which is theta dot which is um, in along a particular direction we can call it as k hat like what we did so this is essentially a simple rotation kind of a problem and this is the uh, center of that uh, sphere or cylinder and we are talking about uh, these two points breaking up the contact point as belonging to the tire and belonging to the uh, road and therefore we are talking of it as p and p prime and um, we introduce an initial frame of reference with coordinates uh, x and y over here okay so now um, so consider these obviously these are like two rigid bodies the um, the ball and or the tire and the road and uh, uh, so essentially in, in reality of course your tire is not a rigid body it is flexible and so we have to look at the elastics of that in fact it's not even elastic material uh, most of it is um, viscoplastic and uh, we need to uh, take into account it's also rubber it uh, gets into the hyper elastic regime the strains could be uh, fairly large so a uh, lot of complications are there in reality but here we are just assuming let's say it's a metallic cylinder whatever it's ro uh, rolling and um, it has a negligible amount of deflection or deformation uh, that is happening right so there, therefore you know we're talking of it as a rigid body rb right so two rigid bodies and the second um, as in this case could be just a boundary or a surface it not be necessarily the entire earth that we are looking at it could be just be a boundary or a surface that is good enough as you know for a frame of reference you don't even actually require a rigid body it could be any massless imaginary structure as well right so but the important thing is that what i have underlined there that they are in continuous contact okay so in other words um, these remain in contact all the time there's no gap that is developing between them so that is continuous contact and then uh, instantaneously you're looking at a pair of points which called as p and p prime which is also over here and um, one on each of the two bodies in contact there can be you can also consider uh, more complex situations but uh, this is uh, good enough for now so now rolling uh, is essentially you're saying that there's zero relative velocity between when i say rolling I, i'm probably referring to pure rolling over here zero relative velocity between um, the paired contact points that is p and uh, p prime right so now if it is slipping then obviously that condition is violated and therefore you have a non zero uh, relative velocity between uh, those points p and p prime Would you like to qualify anything on this <laughs> yeah okay so let's continue with this uh, just a few minutes um so for single um, rigid body uh, rolling on a non moving surface that you see over here because this road is not having any velocity with respect to this xy system of course with respect to a sun fixed or a uh, zodiac fixed system this would have um, it would also be moving so here is a single rigid body that's namely the ball or the tire rolling on a non moving surface uh, and when you have something like this of course this could also be a inclined surface need not be horizontal it could be inclined and when the effect of gravity etc can be taken into account but that's for another day because that involves kinetics not kinematics right so rolling 
Now, uh, zero velocity of the uh, surface contact point, uh, even for this case, of course, the forces are involved. We'll be talking of the uh, weight and therefore the normal force that is coming from the road onto the tire and then the friction, uh, frictional force, which is kinetic friction coefficient, mu k uh, multiplied by the um, normal force, etc. But again, all of that is beyond kinematics which is what our focus is on right now keeping things simple okay so zero velocity of the surface contact point so because uh, p prime is not having any velocity therefore p cannot have any velocity essentially you're saying that it is zero right the actual contact point that's instantaneous of course because the very next instant uh, it has a certain velocity right so the actual contact point may change with respect to time and in fact does especially when you're having pure rolling um, and one full revolution every point on that surface of that uh, circular surface uh, gets a chance to be in touch with the horizontal surface right but uh, zero instantaneous velocity of the current contact point so whatever it at a particular instant t uh, is in contact so that is having a zero velocity uh, it's essentially you're talking of the relative velocities of course over there right so uh, recollect that uh, uh, so we are going to apply something that we learnt in today's class to this particular uh, situation so the two points fixed on a uh, moving rigid body remember that we had this particular equation uh, relating velocities of p and q uh, using the angular velocity of uh, the body on which both of them are fixed and then of course we had the corresponding um, accelerations of these two points as well let's see how we can probably apply it to this particular problem so we we'll uh, on a fixed straight line is what we are looking at over here so once again the same problem what we discussed now let's say yeah, x is along the direction of motion of c and uh, y is perpendicular to that this there's no motion happening with respect to y as far as c is concerned but other points on the circumference are of course having a change in their y coordinate as well right so there is a simple uh, um, uh, rotation and a simple angular velocity that is involved therefore you just have a theta dot and the direction of course as is shown and therefore uh, the axis is going into the um, into the projection screen so uh, now we assume the wheels angular velocity to be therefore because it's going inside and remember uh, the right hand rule says that if i cross i with j i cross j should give me a k hat which is coming out whereas this i have shown it to go in in as far as this particular direction is clockwise and therefore it's opposite to that and therefore the negative signs that you see over here as theta dot uh, k hat and minus theta double dot k hat being omega and alpha vectorially so then um, you assume that the wheels uh, centers uh, wheel centers velocity and acceleration because of the fact that we are assuming uh, no skidding or slipping we are essentially saying that vc and uh, ac is essentially your xc dot and xc double dot along i but irrespective of whether uh, that happens the condition is there or not this is of course valid because essentially we are saying that this is a rigid body therefore it maintains a horizontal whereas in a tire you could have, it be, could be a bumpy ride that you have and therefore there could be a, a change in the uh, y position of c as well right next uh, we note that the rigid body has an angular velocity and an angular acceleration this is something that i already mentioned that uh, these two concepts of omega and alpha are always associated with rigid bodies whereas uh, v and uh, a are always associated with particles or points okay so don't get confused between them yes you could have a particular point on the rigid body like the center of mass whose v and a you could be talking about but otherwise it's not of the whole body uh, uh, so I can't say, um, uh, for example, here that VC and AC are uh, that of the wheel. VC and AC are not of the wheel. It's of a point on the wheel, which is the wheel center, right? Similarly, I can't talk of omega and alpha of C. I have to talk of omega and alpha of the whole body, which is what, um, which is the wheel in this particular case. Okay. So, uh, so don't kind of make, mix these up, which is kind of common for. Um, students were uh, just being introduced into dynamics so just be aware of this um, potential error okay now the default units of angle uh, what do you typically use in the case of uh, most engineering problems if uh, if nothing is said that which is what default means um, what would you typically use as the unit of an angle <coughs> 
yeah yeah so so most of the equations as we write are kind of unsaid it is essentially valid only when it's radians otherwise you'll have to uh, bring in uh, the factor for example if it's in degrees you'll have to have a 180 by pi uh, kind of a multiplication or division depending upon uh, what you're dealing with right so now rolling wheel on a fixed straight line continuing the same problem so the rolling constraint of course is that the relative velocity you're talking of that vp is equal to zero so when we do that that is instantaneously that vp equal to zero so your rolling constraint relates the uh, velocity of the center of mass that is point c to the wheel's angular velocity which is your theta dot right so very clearly you can see that therefore your xc dot is equal to r times theta dot and when you have this um, you can see from a vectorial point of view want to write it you know that um, this is uh, i hat because vc is along i so that is essentially what we are having so essentially it's coming from a cross product uh, because your theta dot is along k and r is uh, 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 along uh, negative y over here and therefore that's the cross that you are having and therefore between k and uh, j and therefore you are ending up with an i so you can look at it from that point of view as well so it's r theta dot times i and therefore when you take the second derivative because we have said it's a rigid body therefore r is not changing therefore only theta is changing i j k are also not changing so i remains r remains and theta dot becomes theta double dot when you're talking of the acceleration of that point c right so once again uh, this is under the rolling constraint and um, integrating the constraint so you see that uh, if you try to uh, integrate this first equation that you have over here it's a time derivative on both sides so obviously you have to introduce a, a constant of integration that uh, goes without saying so essentially you're uh, establishing your reference point uh, from where you're measuring the distances xc so now um, yeah so again uh, so this is acceleration of the rolling wheels contact point uh, so we're just taking that last expression so uh, once you do that so this is um, remember uh, uh, the assignment that I already gave you is made out of three parts part A part B part C but part B had only three questions so uh, just to be fair I thought uh, this is a simple uh, additional derivation over and above what we did in the previous slide so this is the derivation I want uh, the person who's not doing it in part B uh, to do this okay so <laughs> so yeah it's it's not very difficult uh, uh, trust me yeah <laughs> yeah so it's just a takeover from what we because all the problems anyway will involve what we have learned today and also what we learned in the previous class uh, but this is um, kind of straightforward going from the previous slide to this slide uh, anyway I'll be sharing the slides as well so just um, so just see how you can do it. yeah yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so next class we will get into uh, kinetics. So introduce the laws of motion. Yeah. Thank you.